we are looking at a different way to respond to when we find a, a person on the floor having fallen. So rather than just look at, okay, let's phone the ambulance because that in the past has been our safest option for both the patient and the the staff members. Um, yeah. But actually that doesn't have to be the way. And we've now got new technology that can support us to make better decisions. <laughs> Health Board, we recognise that falls were uh, have been a huge problem for a number of years. And so we uh, created, uh, falls prevention became one of our quality priorities. We think uh, around 500,000 to half a million people over 65 will fall every year. Um, and the impact of that fall can be um, huge for individuals as well as some um, huge sort of socioeconomic um, impact for the for the whole of the region. But as much as the fall itself is is an impact for older people, the long lie, so anything, when somebody falls over, they if they stay on the floor and can't get up themselves for anything over an hour, we class that as a long lie. And there are lots and lots of health implications um, to that happening. So you can see kidney damage, physical and psychological deterioration. So what we what we what we know is we've got huge pressures on our um, ambulance services. We get stuck when we get to secondary care and get into our hospital sites. Um, patients, we we the flow through the system means that we have a lot of pressure on that front door area. So the more people coming in. Um, with um, any number of, of conditions or issues, many of them are, are falls. Um, that's adding pressure. So um, the ambulance services get stuck because we can't offload patients and then help patients into the system, which means that then, of course, the ambulances aren't there to be able to um, support. So we we needed to do we needed to be looking at something different. And what we found is that actually, on a number of occasions and quite high number of occasions the fall itself wasn't causing injury and so to be calling an ambulance wasn't necessarily the right thing to do because the last thing we want for these these individuals is to be um taken into hospital and then sort of got into the system and then potentially continue to deteriorate and lose function so we needed to be able to look at a different a different way of doing things so amy um contacted myself her and she had, it's not my idea she'd already had the um had the concept and something they wanted to explore um and i know simply say particularly a, a really pragmatic and 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 doers and want to get on and, tr and try something so um that's where we're at we are looking at a different way to respond to when we find a, a person on the floor having fallen so rather than just look at okay let's phone the ambulance because that in the past has been our safest option for both the patient and the the staff members um yeah. but actually that doesn't have to be the way and we've now got new technology that can support us to make better decisions and support people at home for longer excellent thanks larry so um demi i want to turn to you now because you obviously larry mentioned your your sim the simply safe care group there so your organization is an at home care provider within the community and it's got approximately 65 service users i believe so what what's your involvement with the project um so i'm project lead for simply safe company so i do kind of the liaison with larry and amy jenkins um put the process together for our particular company um, and then we did the training and stuff like that as well. So what was the training that you did? So we've undertaken a quite a bit of training. Um, we've met with OTs with to go through the CAMEL, um, how to best use the CAMEL. Um, we've met with WAST, Welsh Ambulance Service, um, to go through kind of the medical side of things and how to assess properly. And then we've also had training on the iStumble app. So that's then been filtered down through all of our staff then as well. So can you tell us a little bit more about that app, Demi? Yeah, so um, I'd never heard of it before this project. And as soon as I seen it, it was, well, it was brilliant. I think it's been made for the everyday um, public to use. It's not for medical professionals. It's not for, um, you know, OTs, physios, anything like that. Anybody in the public can use it, which I think is fantastic and more people need to. But it's very, very simple. It's a step-by-step -step yes or no question. And then it'll give you an outcome at the end then. 
of as to whether to phone an ambulance or pick up the person. Thanks, Demi. So, Amy, can I turn to you? How does Swansea yeah. Council get involved? So um, we have regular provider forums with our dom- domiciliary care providers. So obviously we commission quite a lot of that across Swansea to support older people in their homes. Um, and, you know, you, you have these conversations and you kind of start problem solving. You know, you see more and more that providers are coming to you saying we've had to wait however long for somebody, with somebody. There wasn't really an alternative apart from calling an ambulance. Um, and luckily we had a, an OT called Francesca attend one of our provider forums and she mentioned the app and suggested that we would we could look at using it. So I think the main barrier we, we always face uh, in the care sector is being risk adverse. Um, and obviously we needed to kind of fully explore, you know, what we were trying to do and how we could do it in a less risky way because, you know, we have an ingrained approach of ringing an ambulance when somebody's fallen. Um, I think Demi's undersold herself a little bit because she's put an enormous <laughs> amount of work into this. She's basically redone policies and procedures. You know, she's supported the, oh. the, st- the staff team. She's had to, you know, make a lot of decisions. Um, and although, yeah, the R- RI of the company has definitely been advocating for this approach for a long, long time, um, you know, we've we've found a way of doing this now. Um, and it just... It's got so many benefits, not just to the individual and their well-being, but also to like how care agencies are able to run um, and be more efficient and have another option and not just call an ambulance and then need to stay with that individual until an ambulance arrived. Often people are socially isolated or don't have family living close by. You know, it is a really um, difficult one. And I think in my personal life, I just started hearing more and more talk of this, of people, you know, friends and family saying, oh, they were stuck on the floor for hours and hours. You know, and it is... And there must be an alternative. We can't, you know, keep going this way. So we were really keen to kind of explore an alternative approach and empower care providers to do a bit more. Um, and the app is the perfect risk assessment tool to look at that 